Welcome to I Love Stocks. Today we're going to bring up a few watch lists here, a little watch list of some stocks that I'm going to be watching today. And let's just go ahead and get right to the scene. We're going to pull up the chart. We're going to start off with CRM. We're going to be using my Fibonacci chart with my EMA moving averages. I might pull up my SMA if I need to on the yearly daily. But we have the 200, the 100, the 34, and the 9 EMA. And this is how I trade them. But first, let's talk about CRM. We talked about that last week, called it out. I said we're, we had an ascending triangle. Let's pull up the, let me see if it's on the five day. Right down here, had the little ascending triangle, and we've had higher highs ever since. And then we kind of leveled off here in the past couple of days. And I think we're getting ready to squeeze again. Now, I have a lot of trend lines on here because I've been watching it pretty closely. And I got out of the trade yesterday at this high, and it pulled on back. So it keeps following this trend line up. We're going to go ahead and have a breakout. And that breakout's going to be right around, I'd say, this 229.50 area. That's going to be CRM. They had that deal with Slack, and it had a huge bottom on it. Called it out in the room. I said, man, this thing getting ready for a buy. It hit my low support. And ever since then, we've had higher lows. Now, the option hasn't moved up that much, but I did take a little bit of profit off of it. And it just seems like when it has great runs, it likes to pull back. So I think that's going to start squeezing out. We're going to have another nice little breakout past 230. And that's going to be CRM. Jimmy likes it. Let's look at another one here. We're going to look at PFE. PFE I got in yesterday. Had that Pfizer's news, and that lady got her vaccine yesterday. So, yeah, I'm liking this one. We got new highs right now at 43. I think we have an all time high. Let me go back three years on this. I just want to bring this to your attention. We did have a 45, 4405 target on it, high on it. You know, I think, I think once it gets up to around 4340, I might go ahead and take some profit. That's going to be PFE. I'm in that trade. And I'm thinking right around this area right in here, right around that 4340 area, somewhere in there. I might just go ahead and jump on out or jump out if we see a spike first thing this morning. Let's bring it back up to the day. We did fly up after hours to 4303. Got in the trade right down here. I have been was in it earlier and sold it. Then we had that nice pop, and I got back in it on the dip. I got in it right here at this $42 level, called it out in the room. I said, this thing getting ready to bounce. It started to bounce a little bit, but then pulled back for to that $41.90. And then she went ahead and started taking off with a higher low. Broke past my moving averages. They all turned around. Then it ran the nine all the way up. And it was tape just looked beautiful. I was just saying, this tape is marvelous. Once it hit this area right in here... I could see some selling going on, so I knew it was going to be a little choppy on the way up. But once confidence, that big sell-off, and the chickens left the hen house, they started coming back to feed, and then it ran on up. We hit about 43.04 after hours. I'm going to go ahead and take the first pop out of it and get out of the trade and then maybe get back in it on the dip. So that's going to be PFE. That's a nice one, a little watch one right there. The next one we're going to talk about is PICK. Pick had some news yesterday. Let's pull that up. It, Pick announces effectiveness of registration statement of annual meeting of stockholders to approve proposed merger with XL Fleet to be held December 21st, 2020. So the merger, I think, will happen, and this is going to be a big deal for PIC. So let's go ahead, and it had a nice little pop yesterday. Let's take a good look at it. I got both my Fibonacci's up here right now. Let's go ahead and just pull up the 20 day. That's what we'll work off for right now. It's had a pretty nice little 20 day run. And when it pulls back, it pulls back for a couple of days and then finds support from the previous high. We can see that repeatedly. This is called a stair stepper. It'll pull back to the previous highs. So if this pulls back, it can pull back to this previous high. And I'm gonna think right about in here at 16.64. History repeats itself. Let's see if it pulls back to that 1664 and then finally eventually gets to 20. And that's going to be PIC. I like it. 
I love it. I want some more of it. Let's look at FUV, another EV car on my EV car watch list. And then we're going to run Tesla over after that. It had a nice pop yesterday. It could pull back to the previous high, and that's going to be right around this area right in here, a little above the 50% retracement, which is going to be right around 1341. But I'm going to draw another trend line in here for second support, and that's going to be right, well, it could be right down here. Let's, let's have a compromise, 1286 to maybe about 1298 area. We're going to go ahead and pull that up on the daily one minute see if I missed anything yeah right down in here I'm gonna go ahead and put me a nice little trend line in here this is gonna be on FUV for that third support we've got the first the second then we got another support level right in here at 1311 why I see that I'll show you right right about there We had a little consolidation here and it pulled back. Had like a little resistance level and it pulled back. So I, I chalked that resistance level up here and I could lower that a little bit too, I think, to right around 1337 if I wanted to fine tune it like a fiddle. First, second, third, and then the fine stronger buy where it should hold right here or it bounces off this flag right here, one or the other. FUV, keep an eye on it today. Pull back and then a retracement back up. These old resistances now become support. Tesla. Tesla had that uh, news yesterday. Five billion dollar uh, offering, shelf offering, if I remember right, but it is an offering, and it didn't affect the stock. You know, there are people that will sell it on the news because of algorithms or whatever it is. But this is in the S&P now, and I'm 95% I'm bullish on this every day. So any kind of dips, or when we had the higher low, that was the suggestion right there to get into the trade on the second pullback. I talk about this a lot to beginner traders. I said if we get a higher low on that second pullback, wait. You know, I, me, I'll scalp it. I'll get in here and I'll jump in this trade on the first dip and jump up here and get out of the trade at resistance. Resistance was right in here today. You see what I'm saying? We hit that double top and then we pulled back. This is an easy, easy stock to trade. Easy. I mean, just a no-brainer to trade this stock. We had a higher low. That was the time to get in the trade and run it all the way back up to that 650 area. We're building a channel. This was a healthy move to me to stay in that channel and that channel is going to start right around oh i'm going to say no lower than this i mean if it gets down to 40604 load the boat load the boat and then we've got a couple other support levels one right here at 618 and another one right here so these are going to be and that 620 is a strong area that, used to be my old resistance that I called out that we were going to break, we were going to go to if we ever did break 600. And we did. We went to that 620. And then she went ahead and had that nice little run, pulled back, and then eventually went back up there. So we're going to build a channel. It's going to build a flag. And then I'm probably going to squeeze into next week. And this is going to be Tesla. I don't see it breaking resistance too much. I see it forming a sideways channel. That's going to be Tesla. I love it. Let's go ahead and do a couple more here. We've got Apple. Apple is also bullish. I had a low support down here at 120.51. I'm going to raise it up to this level right in here, right around 121.50. Let's put her in. Let's go ahead and put her at 52 mark. So I'll be ready for the pullback. That's going to be my support, 121.51 to hold. And we're also in a sideways channel that broke out in the last two days. I think this thing can get back up to 130, but for right now, it's going to be a little choppy, and we're going to be keep just going up a little higher every day. So play the pullbacks. Don't chase it. It'll come back to you, and that's going to be Apple. And let's take one more look. We're going to go ahead and look at Netflix. Netflix was upgraded by Jeffries yesterday. 
Jeffrey's boost Netflix target to 610 with a bull case of 700. Now, Netflix raised their rates, so people turning on their Netflix show, seeing that they had to pay a little bit more money for their for their um, for their for their rates, so they can get logged in and watch this thing. So we're going to be watching this. This is going to be a very nice one to watch. Let's go ahead and put up Netflix up on the chart. Let's have a little look at it. I'm going to erase. Well, let's first this one here. Let's take a good look at it. It stayed in this channel for a long time. So let's go back a little bit farther here. Let's look at the three month. And I'm going to clear this up here in a second. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and clear it up. We can't see nothing here. It's done, time's done past. But I did call a little channel down here, and it held this support area for a long time, right around 468 to this bottom line support right around the 475. Well, here comes winter, and this stock's starting to see a little bit. Last 10 days, last 8 days, 2 weeks, it's been getting higher highs, and it's been showing bullish flags. We had, I mean, every, every daily flag has been a bull. So let's go ahead and pull this up and clean this chart up. And we'll start fresh. I don't want to do that, but I've had this up for a while. We need to clean it up. Let's go ahead and pull up the yearly and look at it one more time. We can get a better look at it now. It's much clearer. I always like to keep it simple and fresh. Let's find a pivot point in this channel. Let's find a pivot point in this channel. And I, I, I can already tell where my target's going to be. Netflix. But I want to try to find a nice little support area. And I think right in here is a good pivot point. Right about. I'm just going to put it right here at 504.73. We bottomed right there. We got some equilibrium all the way up through here. We had some resistance levels right here. So that 504.73 is going to be the pivot point. I think we can pull back from this 512.66 to that area today. Let's find some resistance levels. We're going to find one right here. And eventually, I think we're going to get easily back up to 550 here within a week or two. Maybe sooner. So I'm going to draw a few trend lines in here. Then I'm going to put in a low support. We're going to go to the 20 day. And we got a high up here right around the 569 area. We'll definitely hit that too. I don't know about before Christmas, but we're definitely on our way. Let's look at the 20-day. Got solid support right down here at 491. And another one right here at 496. We got an area right here at 501.59 and right in here. Okay. We kind of had us a little bullish flag right here. See, so come up from the bottom. This is called a bullish descending pattern. If you're not familiar with it, it usually you see them when they when you were coming up from a low. We had a flag, and then it created a a, a bullish descending descending triangle. And I'll take a look. I'll show you what I'm talking about right here. See that. That, that there, that's a bullish, and it comes up from the bottom here. That's a bullish, and then you have the breakout, and it breaks on out, and then we're going to consolidate. But with that upgrade from Jeffries, I can see it breaking this 516 area, 516 to a high, to a double top high of 521.49, and then breaking resistance up here to 527 with a long target to 550, maybe 600. And that's going to be Netflix. Jimmy likes it. I think that's it for today's market review. I love stocks. Please subscribe, ring that bell. Follow us on Twitter. We do have a Twitter page, and we keep gaining followers on this thing every day. We also have our stock twits. You can follow us on StockTwits. So I'm put, posting alerts in here in my videos just in case you're not in here. On Fleetwood Mac yesterday, I was talking about PFE, JMIA. Let's talk about JMIA.
That's another good one we were looking at yesterday. And then we're going to go ahead and shut this down. I'm starting to set up with higher highs. I caught a little pullback in this about the middle of the end of the day. We do have a support channel here that we did break out of. We did pull back to the top of that support channel right there at 31 something. So, you know, Jeffries is, we're definitely bullish on Jeffries right now. I'm going to see if any news popped up on this here. Nope. No news right now. So let's go ahead and pull up the daily. Take a good look at it. Called a little pullback right into here. I said, don't fret. As long as it holds that 200 EMA, we're going to be safe. You know, I use this 200 EMA as a very strong support line when I'm in a day trade and I see a breakout stock. A lot of them like to pull back. It held up a couple times on the 100. Then once it started finding an equilibrium on that 100, I knew it was going to pull back to the 200 and then maybe bounce up and break. So our resistance level to break is going to be this 30. I called this out in the room. I said we had a hard resistance at 36.35. It did pull back off that resistance level. How did I find that resistance level? I'll show you. We'll look at the 10-day. We had a previous high of right up in here from the previous day before. And then we had some congested area right down in here. So I knew that was going to be a nice little place for a hard resistance. And we did kind of go past that. My ne if we do break this 36.35, the next two resistance levels will be 37.44, 38.25, and I think we can have a double top on the 10-day right here, right around the $40 area, 40.69. But mind you, there's going to be a couple places on the way up that will cause a little bit of congestion, a little bit of consolidation, maybe a pullback. For example, this if we get to 38.25 and it breaks out, I can see it going to 34.99 and pulling back to this 38.25 again and that can happen so count on that to happen if not the momentum picks up we have a nice little breakout and we'll hit that double top on the 10 day at 40.69 i'm bullish on this trade remember i use that 200 as a support level on these momentum stocks if it does break out it also can pull back to that 200 and you can get back into the trade and that's how I kind of trade these stocks. And I have different ways of trading. Yesterday someone brought, why don't you use this way? Well, I haven't used that way yet, but I'm going to. I, I learn from everybody. And that's how I have so many different trading patterns, trading ways to trade a stock. I can scalp it. I can day trade it. I can take the runs. I can wait, be patient, play the pullbacks. I'm not in no hurry to trade anything because I'll watch the move, I'll look for chart patterns, I'll check out the candlesticks. I'm a lot deeper trader than most. I like to dig in there. And I think the only really major improvement I really need to work on is working on like a five-day swing. Maybe uh, I'm above it to three days. You know, I can swing a stock to three days and be pretty much happy. But after that third day, I start to get a little impatient. But I think I'm going to trigger myself to where I can start swinging a few trades longer in my portfolio and just kind of sit on them into 2021. I have a couple in mind already. Uh, this is winter. I'm a seasonal trader. I like to look at the seasons and I like to play the momentum and I like to play the sectors that are running right now. And that is COVID, anything to do with the new gig economy. We are running into a new gig economy. So that's how you need to set yourself up into the year of 2021. Now, I'm an artist. I like to paint. I was a custom picture framer for over 18 years and traveled around the country start doing startups and helping people, uh, just giving them ideas on how to picture frame. But I think this is a gig economy to where if you have a nice little hobby or something that you really enjoy in life, you could take time out and maybe start your own little business or even find work that fits that mode that you're in. There's going to be a lot of new businesses, a lot of new SPACs, a lot of new IPOs coming up. Uh, 2020 was a great year for IPOs due to the volatility. And I think 2021 is going to be a great year for the EV car industry, for 
even the COVID, because we are going into a new gig economy. Keep a good eye on like Amazon, Netflix, Shopify, Etsy, uh, Microsoft, Apple. Apple to me is undervalued right now because of the split. It didn't take off like Tesla did. Tesla's up great. Tesla's going to be my number one trade of the year. I've made quite a bit on that one right there. Just hardly lost in that trade ever. So Netflix, I mean, Tesla's one of the easiest trades I've ever took. And that's about it. So I love stocks. You have a great day, and we'll catch you in the morning. Today is the morning. We'll catch you when the bell rings.